The Winfield is an icon of the frontier and credited with helping settle the West, which kind of glosses over a mass genocide. But the point is, the gun that won the West has come to the South. Wait a second. The gun that won the West. Where have I heard that before? Nice. Woo! Good the job, gun that guys. won the West! My early YouTube videos were kind of painful. I think there is a misconception about the Winfield. Because it is one of the beginner weapons in Hunt Showdown, many people do not return to it once they unlock higher level weapons. But in reality, using the Winfield once you figure out how to play the game feels like returning to your childhood home for the holiday. It's just nice to be in a familiar place. Of course, this totally relatable analogy I've just deployed is not true for anyone whose parents are divorced. I'm going to need a minute. The Winfield 1873 is a three-slot repeating rifle that fires compact ammo and costs $41. The Winfield C does 110 damage to the chest within 10 meters and can be a two-hit kill to the upper torso out to 35 meters. What does the C stand for? Well, I'm not sure exactly, but I have read that the Winnie is widely viewed as a symbol of resistance to the Chinese Communist Party, so I can only assume this is the Communist variant, which explains why everyone starts with one. In the right hands, the Winfield is an absolute head clicker in close and medium ranges, but its compact bullets struggle to make an impression on body hits at a distance. Therefore, because of its underwhelming base damage and range, the Winfield places a new importance on landing headshots or being able to land consecutive follow-ups. The Winfield is perhaps the most diverse platform in the game with 11 compact firing versions of the gun currently tearing up the bayou. The options range in price and approachability, but a few things remain constant. They all benefit from levering, share the same custom ammunition options, and most importantly, can't hide how bad I am at the game. But before we get into all the variations and tangled web of applicable traits, let's first discuss the custom ammo options available to every compact firing Winfield. All the Winfields have the same three custom ammo options, FMJ, high velocity ammo, and incendiary ammo. Like a list of Stanley Kubrick's greatest films, most of the Winfield variants feel incomplete without the inclusion of FMJ. In short, it just makes the Winfield a more competitive option because compact ammo has a steep damage drop-off at range. With FMJ, the effective headshot range is increased from 95 meters to 138 meters. This also means you can get a two-hit kill to the chest from further away, and that's not even considering the increase in bullet penetration. The only drawback of using FMJ is the reduced muzzle velocity, which probably won't matter on most Winfields, except for the suppressed version, which we will talk about. If you do plan to take FMJ, which I would recommend for most of the Winfield versions, you can bring the conversion with FMJ to boost your spare ammo pool. High velocity ammo does exactly what it says. It increases the velocity of the bullet by 200 meters per second, setting the base Winfield at 600 meters per second, or just slightly faster than the Berthier's muzzle velocity. This is great for people who never learned how to properly lead, like a certain 5'7 Slavic man making the world a little darker one day at a time. If you do decide to bring high velocity ammo, you can bring the Nagant pistol options like the officer to boost your high velocity pool. This ammo type is probably most useful for the suppressed version and the marksman, where the velocity can make the difference between a successful ambush and an embarrassing whiff. And lastly, we have the incendiary ammo, which for the 10 people that like it, sets enemies on fire. Although casting other players as emulators in your Bayou short film is fun, the incendiary ammo loses out on penetration and reveals your firing position with glowing tracers. Perhaps the best use for incendiary is with levering because the spam is more likely to ignite enemies. There were several times when incendiary got me out of a bind with AI, but it's not the most competitive PvP pick, so do what feels right to you. Now that we understand the custom ammo, we can talk about all the Winfield options. From the underwhelming primordial soup 
that is the Winfield C, 10 other versions of the gun have spawned and evolved, filling niches as more weapons have joined the game. This is going to feel like a presentation on COVID with how much I am about to talk about variants, so buckle up. The Winfield C has three variants, the suppressed version, the Winfield Marksman, and the Winfield Vandal, which itself has two more variants, the Vandal Striker and the Vandal Deadeye. The Winfield 1873C Silencer is the suppressed Winfield with all the same stats except it has a very slow muzzle velocity at 250 meters per second. This is probably the one exception where FMJ can be a hindrance given that the muzzle velocity with FMJ is 200 meters per second, which is very slow. Like, you could fire, send a booty call text, get a whole Netflix and chill session in, come back and still have time to reload the spent bullet before it hits your target. The suppressed version is best as an ambush weapon and can benefit from high velocity ammo if you struggle with the low velocity. Also, given how terrible the sights are, it's hard to imagine it being your first choice as a suppressed weapon when the Vetterly and the Spark suppressed options already exist. However, the Vagrant skin is really cool, and maybe that's enough reason to exist. The Winfield Marksman is the same old Winfield with a Marksman scope. It pairs well with high velocity ammo or FMJ depending on what you are going for. It is certainly not the best ranged option, but the ability to quickly fire follow-up shots is a nice feature and the scope allows you to land shots you might not otherwise. The Winfield Vandal is kind of an odd name for a variant, but apparently it was used by Germans who raided North Africa in 455 AD. The Vandal is a decent all-around weapon that can have all the same benefits of the base Winfield if you don't mind a bit more sway and a little less damage. The Vandal Striker has a dual blade attachment that can cause bleeding damage on light attack and is great for dealing with multiple AI enemies. It also has a blade that does 105 damage to the chest on a heavy attack, which can be just enough to put a man down. And lastly, the Deadeye version is the other pocket sniper and a bit better for medium distance headshots. At rank 20, the Winfield C is succeeded by the Winfield... Wait, what is this? Let me just check my notes here. Oh, this is the live action footage of the world if everyone that watched this video was subscribed to my channel. Literally a utopian society. Anyway, as I was saying, at rank 20, the Winfield C is succeeded by the Winfield 1873 non-communist version, which doubles the ammo capacity to 16, but it is the same gun in all other aspects. The Winfield 1873 has four variants, the Aperture, the Talon, the Swift, and the Bayonet. The Aperture has an optional Aperture sight that can be flipped down using the alternate fire button. The Aperture gives the Winnie a little more accuracy at range, and having the option to choose your sight gives this variant a bit more versatility. As an added bonus, it only costs an extra $5. Even Jared Fogel can see the value in that. Although, maybe we should keep him away from the compact versions. The Winfield Talon is mounted with blades for melee combat, however it does have a unique characteristic where you can do blunt melee damage on a light attack and intense rending damage on a heavy attack for 150 damage to the torso. It is great for clearing concertina and leveling up the Winfield by quietly killing AI enemies. If you play on console where melee charges are common, this might be the version for you. The Winfield Swift is for anyone that knows all too well how annoying a long reload can be. The Winfield normally has a 15, sorry, I mean 16 second reload, which has caused some bad blood among its fans. So the Swift has, ready for it, these gorgeous speed loaders. That's right, everything has changed. If you are a lover of efficiency and style, and overcome with rage when you die because your hunter's drunken hands took too long to reload with their stupid champagne problems, well, shake it off because the Swift fixes just that. You can tell those other variants we are never getting back together, but it still takes 8 seconds to reload, so you probably don't want to do that in a blank space. And finally, the bayonet version has a bayonet which you can use to bayonet. It is worth noting the bayonet can land a melee hit about one pace further than a normal knife. 
Crytek also released this skin, which, like, come on, man. They had to know, right? If they didn't see it, that's a big shocker. Okay, let's talk about traits. The Winfield version can benefit from 7 traits total, but not all of them apply to every gun. Levering is the only trait as constant as my love for contrived transitions to didactic metaphors about weapons. Levering costs 3 points and allows you to hipfire all Winfields more rapidly at the cost of accuracy. It is great in emergency up close situations for PvP and PvE, but it is also heavily reliant on RNG, which means levering fights can turn into something like this. It also has the benefit of increasing your sex appeal, because ladies love a man that can shoot from the hip, if you know what I mean. I honestly have no idea if that's true. Iron Repeater costs 2 trait points and allows you to remain in iron sight while cycling the next shot, which slightly increases the fire rate. It benefits all windfields with iron sights, including the Aperture version, and in some situations it might be a better pick than Levering because it rewards your own accuracy than relying on chaos. Quartermaster costs 6 points and applies to all the Vandal variants of the windfield. It allows you to carry a 2 slot weapon with a 3 slot weapon. This trait greatly increases the utility of the Vandal because like shopping for clothes in the deep south, there aren't a lot of viable medium options. Why is it so hard to find a medium? Like I, I can't wear an XL. Steady Aim costs 3 points and gradually lessens weapon sway when looking through the scope of a rifle or aperture sight. This trait makes the Winnie Marksman and Aperture easier to fight with at a distance where headshots are more important. Related to it, Marksman Scopesmith costs 2 trait points and allows you to remain in scope when firing the Winfield Marksman. This is especially effective for watching bodies and keeping enemies suppressed, but it isn't always necessary. And finally, Deadeye Scopesmith and Steady Hand only benefit the Vandal Deadeye, so no long arms in this one, just like shopping for shirts in the Deep South. Seriously, even if I do find a medium shirt, 90% of the time the sleeves are too short. Who are these clothes made for? As you can probably tell by now, learning how to use the Winfield is for people that like options. If you want an approachable weapon that does okay damage and has an S tier iron sight, take the base version. If you want to maximize the use of levering, take the non-C version or the Swift. If you want range, take a Marksman or the Aperture. If you're playing on console where melee is more important, take the Talon or the Bayonet. If you're feeling a bit self-loathing, take the Vandal Deadeye. What I enjoy about this gun is that the Winfield as a platform is a great reflection of Hunt Showdown as a game. Building a successful loadout requires an understanding of all the mechanics. How do traits affect your weapon? Which custom ammo options are useful? Which secondary pairs well? The better you are at understanding these questions and answering them, the more success you will have with the Winfield. And although I do think that as of update 1.7.2, the Winfield is a bit too reliant on FMJ to be competitive, I am confident the meta will shift with more updates down the line. At some point, Maybe when you do finally decide to come back to the Winfield, you'll have gained a certain attitude toward Hunt. In a per game basis, there's a lot of factors that are just out of your hands, and you'll address them when you get there. So, whether you are fighting canes hiding in bushes, or making friends in VoIP... Are you the guy I'm playing with last game? Yes. No, I don't want to kill you! Alright, I won't kill you, but my teammates are coming up to you. The Winfield is a great reflection of the systems in Hunt working in harmony to make a truly excellent experience. Until your friend says something that is just wrong. Tom, important question. Yes, sir. What what pizza do you get? Uh, you were either really going to like my answer, uh -oh. or you're really gonna hate it. Oh no. Pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> the pineapple pepperoni pizza <laughs> with, uh, with, with onions and ham. Who hurt you? What is that order? What do you mean? It's delicious. <laughs> I like I like the onions. Though. It is a beautiful combination. That's you can, just, you that's can, just a fact. 
You can pull me out on a video and I will state my case.